Hey, thank you for joining us uh, here in our sold out program and our Wednesday breakfast group. Uh, we have, uh, of course, one of our Wednesday breakfast groups every Wednesday, as it says. It's not that difficult to understand. And each week, uh, one of our members or an outside guest will come in and, and uh, give our little short devotion. And we discuss different ways that we can all improve. The purpose and the drive for the sold out program is for people to, number one, find Jesus and number two, the Christians that have found Jesus to improve their relationship and their walk with him. Get to know him. And that's what our main purpose and our tagline, you might say, a purpose for our organization is. We meet every Wednesday at the Friendly's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. So if you're ever in the area, there's contact information and you can join us. Today, Dale Schofield is bringing our message in its own kindness. And I know we can all take a little bit of kindness. So thank you, Dale, for doing this. And uh, we look forward to maybe you joining us the next Wednesday or at least joining us on our Facebook and our website uh, and also our Thought for the Day post. Thanks. So here we go. Good morning, everyone. Whenever I uh, am asked to do the message, I have a little routine I follow. I start on Monday trying to meditate and think of things, and as usual, I'm sitting there grumbling and uh, just kind of having a pain look to my face as I'm waiting for inspiration to come. And my my lovely wife Shirley said, uh, "What's wrong? What's, what's what's going on?" And I said, hey, "I'm just having trouble thinking of a, a subject." And, uh, in her wisdom, she said to me, "How about kindness? You see all over the internet all these memes about kindness, and you see them on cards in the store, that sort of thing." Uh, now, for those of you. Uh, that have avoided the curse of Facebook and places like that. Uh, a meme, uh, an internet meme is commonly known as a meme. It is a cultural item that is spread via the internet, often through social media platforms. Internet memes can take various forms, such as images, videos, uh, GIFs, and various other viral sensations. Uh, Usually it's you know a picture of a cat or something with some, some words on it, that kind of thing. Uh, so I started kind of perusing through those things and uh, you can really get lost once you get down in the weeds on that kind of stuff. But a couple examples, uh, uh, we are made kind by being kind. Uh, the less an action of kindness seems to be appreciated, the more it is needed and the more of a positive difference it can make. And, you know, uh, you may say those are gift card, I mean, uh, birthday card type statements, but, uh, uh, but if you go further on, you get things like, uh, don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Uh, it's kind of a positive, uh, not a positive, but a, uh, a passive aggressive sort of thing there. Uh, so I, I started thinking on, uh, what does biblical kindness look like? What is it really? Or is it something we should be concerned about, about at all? Or uh, So I found this thing uh, on the internet. What does big, biblical kindness look like? <coughs> We've all experienced acts of kindness. They warm our hearts, bring smiles to our faces, and stick with us for years to come. Annually on November 13th, the world joins hands for World Kindness Day a day highlighting random good deeds and positivity. But is this what kindness is about? Should kindness be reserved for one day of the year, November 13th, December 25th, whatever? Uh, is kindness just random acts? Who deserves our kindness? The Bible has much to say about kindness and offers a perfect role model to follow, Jesus Christ. Rather, kindness is a lifestyle. It's a daily practice. It's a choice. As Christians, we are to grow in the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and kindness. We're called on all those things. But growth takes time. A seed does not transform into a tree overnight, but with careful watering, tending, and patience. A seed will slowly grow day by day into a towering tree. And it's the same with kindness. We must be faithful every day to bear good fruit of kindness. Being kind should be our default mode, a habit of goodwill, a heart of continual service every day. If kindness is, needs faithful practice every day, kindness also requires intentionality. Now, I'm not saying we should never do random acts of kindness. Oftentimes, uh, kind acts are on the spot, in the moment, and unplanned. However, we must be intentional. Either plan uh, specific acts of kindness that you're going to do, or plan for the random. And how the heck do you do that? Well, it's be ready. It's that lifestyle thing we mentioned earlier, to do good on the spot. It's where your head is. And we should look to Christ as that, that guide. Kindness is not when we feel like it or a random act here and there when we happen to think of it. Kindness requires seeking out, looking for the needs of others. During his life on earth, Jesus was a perfect emblem of this fruit of the Spirit. For three years of ministry, he looked toward the needs of others, never turning them away. He could be counted on. And how often today do we miss opportunities to show God's love to others because we're too busy? We rush here and there, leaving the needs of others in a blur as we whiz past. So we need to slow down and open our eyes. Jesus took the time, and you should too. Slow down, make the time, and look for the needs of others. Be intentional in showing kindness and be consistent. Now there, as I research this, there are a lot of uh, scriptures that are were referenced. The one that, to me, really expresses this, if, if you really think about it, is one we're all familiar with. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. The Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened by, happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, which, if you put it in context of the times, that's kind of the low of the low. Somebody who, as a good Jew, would not associate with at all. In fact, you would hate them. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he, took, then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. When I will return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense. Once again, a little context, two silver coins 
was two days labor, but would keep somebody in an inn for two months. Now, you see the panhandler on the street and maybe you give him a McDonald's gift certificate or a buck or two or even five or 10 bucks. Nothing like what this Samaritan did. He took it on personally and really gave a significant amount. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell under the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. I, I just think, I, I love it when he says things like that. Uh, Those without sin cast the first stone. Go and sin no more. Uh, so much to the heart of uh, who Jesus was. <clears throat> so back to uh, the thing, article I was reading. Time and again, God looks out for the cause of widows and orphans. He cares deeply for the strangers in the land. He emphasizes love for family. He requires mercy and compassion for even your enemies, which in today's world is really a stretch, I think, for all of us. Always has been, but Scripture and Jesus calls us to do that. Oftentimes we want to choose whom we show, to whom we show kindness. Left on our own, we would limit kind acts to friends and people in authority above us and people from whom we can attain something in return. But Christ requires, calls us to lower our eyes and look at those who are below, who have nothing and can offer nothing and have no defender. He calls us to welcome the foreigner and the rejected in our land. And that's one thing we, if we do an act of kindness and we're looking for even appreciation, if not something in return, uh, <laughs> is it really an act of Christian kindness? And that's something I have to watch. Rather than revenge, he calls us to bless our enemies, knowing that through kindness we can soften their heart. Heap coals on their head, I think, as the scripture goes. Jesus was perfectly selfless in everything he did. Flowing unceasingly from him, kindness was his lifestyle. He took notice for the cause of the needy, intentionally and consistently seeking them out, even when he was tired and weary. Without partiality, he was kind to everyone, even if they don't deserve it. You know, we're not the judge of anybody. Only God and Christ are. He turned no one away, and by shedding his blood on the cross, he demonstrated his love for the entirety of humanity. The Amen. ultimate act of kindness. Christ is the perfect role model of kindness. So what does biblical kindness look like? It looks like Christ, not just for a season or one day of the year. Kindness is for every moment of the day. It's a habit. It's a lifestyle, a continual practice. It is t intentional, taking time and patience and giving of ourselves in the busy or even when we are too tired. And lastly, kindness is for absolutely everyone. As we intentionally show kindness each day, may we shine in the light of Christ to a dying world in need of a savior, a generation in need of love and grace. Be Jesus to someone today and every day and make him the role model for your kindness. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody lived like this? But in today's world, and historically, we're fallen. We're sinners, all of us. So we don't. In some ways, that's not really important because it really 
you have to go what's in and see what's in God's eye. And what matters is that he expects you and me to individually, as followers of Christ, show kindness to everyone. So that's what I have. I'd like to hear what you folks uh, think. Dale, thank you for that. Thank you.